Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Season three is officially live now in Warzone and Vanguard. Obviously, we got a bunch of new season three content, new weapons, new operators, new map changes, all sorts of stuff like that. And alongside all that stuff, we also have some brand new season three patch notes for the 1.57 update. And today we're going over all the changes included with the season three patch. As we break it all down, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. It really does help grow the channel. And if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed, right around 54% of viewers are not subbed right now. And every single day, I got you covered with everything going on in Call of Duty. News, updates, loadouts, tips, you'll find it all right here. So feel free to sub with those notifications turned on. That way you can always guarantee you're up to date. All right, so we've got our season three patch notes now live. We're gonna go through and once we get to all the weapon changes, there's actually a clean version of Raven's like website and it makes all the weapon changes way easier to understand so we'll switch to that in a moment but first off uh with season three launch here the ricochet anti-cheat uh is now available in vanguard so it's in warzone and vanguard multiplayer now uh we've got some of our playlist previews all the way through may 19th i imagine after that we're probably going to see the mid-season update starting off this week though we've got br solos duos trios and quads iron trials quads on caldera we've got clash 50 versus 50 then solos duos trios and quads for rebirth resurgence and of course we'll break down the playlist every Every single week as we get through those uh we obviously have a brand new battle pass we'll be covering the battle pass in a separate video all 100 tiers here and uh, as soon as like the update goes live in like an hour hour and a half from when i'm recording this obviously operation monarch is coming and we'll have some more information on this later on this week so be sure to stay tuned for that uh new modes caldera iron trials obviously it's the same iron trial experience that we've had throughout verdansk and rebirth island previously honestly a ton of fun with that 400 health there's certain exclusions for the gulag different rule sets the usual stuff going on there plunder adjustments increased carrying limit players had a hard limit in plunder of carrying a maximum of 1.6 million whilst this is an uh, an extremely unlikely scenario we wanted to make the system more robust for the minority of players that achieve such a feat uh for rebirth resurgence adjustments players no longer spawn in with the diamati so that's pretty important to note no more diamati spawning in that's a big change for Rebirth. If you played a lot, you know what that means. Uh, we got the new Hold Gulag. Uh, so that'll be a brand new area for that. Whenever you end up dying on Caldera, you'll be able to fight in there instead of the little cave that was inside of uh, the peak, obviously. We got the Dig Site location, the new Skybox with like the storm clouds and everything will change things up a little bit. Maybe the sun won't be as blinding when you're trying to fight against that. Uh, a Dark Storm approaches like I said, I feel like that is sort of uh, hinting at something to come in the future. Obviously, Peak has like this whole updated look to it. We saw pictures of this earlier on this week. We have uh, some updates to Private Match. They're going to be adding Rebirth Resurgence Solos, Rebirth Iron Trials, and added new support for Rebirth Island features as well. And XP tokens can now be activated from the in-game menu. So you don't have to be on the main menu to activate them. You could be in like the countdown for a pre-game and activate your tokens there. And moving on to gameplay, we got the new Sabotage Contract. Essentially, if you grab one of these, it's going to highlight a vehicle on the map you got to go and destroy that vehicle once you do it'll give you an armored truck and the regular contract rewards we also have high value loot zones coming in season these are essentially going to be like from apex right where it'll give you uh an area on the map when you first load in and it'll say you know highlighted peak and all red or whatever and that's the high value loot zone they are represented by a dollar sign which provide the best looting opportunities these zones will be complemented with rebirth supply boxes that provide reoccurring loot opportunities so that's a huge deal once those get implemented in season that'll definitely change up hot drop spots in any given match we have some general adjustments here the gas mask will no longer interrupt you when you're falling you'll love to see that no more fall damage because of that and uh, it won't play an animation when the player is ads and affected by the gas of the nebula five rounds for most wanted contracts the timer can actually be reduced now by eliminating opponents that'll be a 20 second reduction opening a supply box reduces it by five seconds and they basically did that because they want to promote aggressive play with a king contract rather than you getting in a vehicle and just driving around for three minutes right uh players can no longer use the attack map to ping a most wanted contract but it is going to refresh more frequently and almost be like a real-time uh follow of where that most wanted player is going so definitely some interesting changes to that for the bounty contract they uh increase the speed that it refreshes on the tac map so it'll also be more towards like real time tracking there deployable buy stations when a player pings a deployable buy station there will now be dedicated audio and narration for that and then redeploy positioning improvements players who redeploy via gulag or are brought back will now spawn closer to their squad rather than a thousand meters away on the other side of the map right so that's a huge update too caldera adjustments loot that spawns across 
across Caldera has been adjusted. Obviously, we've got perks now as lootable options. You can basically build your own specialist bonus here. Battle Hardened, Engineer, High Alert, Restock, Tempered, Quick Fix, and Scavenger are all available in BR. Then Point Man is also available in Plunder exclusively. Uh, only one of each perk can be equipped. They can be pinged to say, hey, you know, there's an Engineer over here. They actually stack on top of your loadout perks and they're unequipped and do not drop on death. So they are one and done. We also have some Rebirth Island spawn adjustments. They remove the damage reduction scaling system that was based on ground distance. Uh, the system is disabled if a player is near the ground or an opponent. Players who have the shield icon will only take a flat 25% of the damage received and spawn protection will no longer uh, reduce gas circle damage. For the weapon trade station adjustments here, uh, they reduce the specialist token drop rate and the station will now look uh, for an empty space to drop your award. So it's not just like a cluttered pile of stuff if everyone's trading in their guns. Later on this season, likely in season three reloaded, I'd imagine, uh, we are looking to bring in additional audio improvements for footsteps. So the big audio changes that they've talked about before, those will be happening later on in season three. And they ha also have a fix coming for the whole slide camera lock when you're trying to slide down at an angle and it locks your camera. They'll be fixing that fully later on in the season as well. Buy stations no longer require a confirmation when making a purchase. You just click it once and it's done. So that's, uh, you know, nice and easy. You don't have to go in and confirm, yes, I want to buy back my teammate. Yes, I want to buy this UAV. Uh, plenty of bug fixes here. Fix an issue causing incorrect ping locations when you're near a redeploy balloon, an issue that caused players to get stuck in AA turrets, an issue that prevented carryable gasoline from being picked up with dead silence active, uh, an issue that allowed players to glitch carryable gasoline canisters up ladders, uh, an issue that was preventing skyhook balloons from receiving damage from certain explosives, an issue that allowed players to have unlimited gas immunity when entering an area of the PDS, an issue that caused vehicles to receive less damage than intended, so that's like uh, C4s and whatnot should probably destroy vehicles again normally, uh, an issue that caused players to be kicked back to the main menu when looking at vanguard charms an issue with the buy station ui when you are attempted to scroll up so that's the controller fix there that's a big fix uh happy to see that in there an issue with the armagera that caused the code name to be used as another weapon uh, an issue flying helicopters near capital that pulled towards the ground just extreme gravity for some reason an issue that caused the uh fenrir unchanged finisher to not be available an issue that caused the blueprint specific attachments for purgatory lost to not be available an issue that caused the mod uh 0.3 10 times telescopic uh, telescopic telescopic optic on the M1 grant to appear blacked out. Tons of stuff going on with this one. Uh, an issue that caused the player's view to be obstructed when using the pedal pusher skin. An issue that allowed players to clip into stairs uh, in certain areas of the map. And then also an issue with the Armageras, uh Bodhi DA stock not receiving a bonus to flinch like intended. They also have several known issues on the Trello. Now, when it comes to weapons, like I said, we're on the clean version of Raven software. So it's way easier to understand the nerfs and the buffs here. If it's in red, it's a nerf. If it's in green, it's a buff. So as we go through all these weapons, that'll make more sense obviously we've got new weapons coming in the battle pass with the nikita avt and the m1916 we also have new unlock challenges for the kgm 40 earn three double kills with an ar in 15 different matches and for the whitley destroy three kill streaks with an lmg in a single match 15 times but when it comes to the weapon adjustments for the stg the 30 russian short mags had three nerfs here the damage range was decreased the horizontal recoil and the vertical recoil pen penalties were decreased and the visual recoil was decreased for the garanko mags the damage range penalty was removed removed and the velocity penalty was also removed so that's a solid uh for the 620 precision barrel here i believe the bullet velocity was increased and uh now increases the damage range as well for the 320 millimeter barrel velocity and range were increased horizontal recoil was decreased and then the initial firing recoil penalty was decreased a little bit making it a bit easier to use and for the 760 millimeter barrel the damage range was increased and the velocity was also increased a little bit too so that'll make that more ideal over range uh, I, uh primarily is what the goal is there for the itra burst they increase some of the magazine capacities all around for all these magazines uh the itra burst has considerable close to mid-range potential however as a fast firing burst weapon it just doesn't have enough ammo is essentially what they're saying there so that should help it be a little bit more competitive uh on the volk the Garanko 30 round mags, they removed the damage range penalty and velocity penalty. On the Garanko 40 round mags, same deal there. On the 428 millimeter barrel, the velocity is increased a little bit. On the Rice Store 407 millimeter barrel, the velocity and the range was increased. And on the 287 millimeter barrel, the control is now worse, but the velocity is now better. On the Vargo, good grief, they nerfed a lot here. The VDV reinforced barrel, the control was decreased. The takedown barrel, the horizontal control was decreased. Task force, horizontal and vertical control was decreased. Liberator barrel, vertical control decreased twice. I assume they probably meant to do horizontal and vertical there. Uh, for the foregrip, horizontal recoil was decreased. And for the Spetsnaz grip, both uh, horizontal and vertical control 
was decreased so the vargo is going to be a little bit harder to use now all around on the xm4 the minimum damage range was decreased by one uh and the maximum damage range was actually increased by about 30 units there so one slight nerf one slight buff uh for handguns the top break the max damage was increased all around so it's now going to hit harder it's still a magnum though and probably not going to be super ideal also for handgun charlie in cold war uh, i believe that is the diamati the headshot multiplier was uh decreased to 1.49 it's been a truly dominant secondary due to its substantial headshot multiplier so they had to go ahead and nerf that to balance out the ttk now for lmgs for the bren the max damage and the min damage was nerfed pretty significantly here two points across each so ideally the bren's no longer to be that powerhouse also on the sakura 40 round mags the control is decreased even more on the scepter barrel the control was decreased on the royal barrel the control was decreased for the horizontal movement which is not ideal and for the tight grip perk control was also decreased perhaps the bren is finally 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 gone the bren is overstated to welcome as a long range choice by addressing some of the major outliers of the weapon we've left a strong choice for those that control can control it effectively so it'll still hit decently but it's not going to be nearly as easy uh, as it was before and obviously it's not going to hit as hard before for the whitley the minimum damage was increased a little bit the ads speed was decreased on the british 45 rounds the fire rate was increased i'm curious to see if that'll help out the ttk some and then for the gracie barrel the ads speed is also decreased snipers there's a lot of stuff going on here the adoption of 150 health in battle royale resulted in a huge boom to the sniper category while all other weapons require an additional shot or two snipers remained as they did previously the long-standing one-shot rule unfortunately diluted the sniper class as mentioned above snipers may uh now use damage ranges as a defining characteristic of their one-shot potential this not only brings more identity to each weapon but means attachments that provide the lighter and quicker sniper rifles a damage range stat will increase their ability to one shot at increased distances so the following weapons will only one shot to the head while inside of their max damage range which i believe is like 50 to 80 meters depending on the sniper the car from mw the spr the pellington the swiss the type 99 and the car from vanguard those will all only one shot to the head if you're within that certain range the following weapons will one shot to the head at any range the hdr the ax50 the zrg the three line and the ptrs or the garanko those are one shots if you're two meters away if you're 2000 meters away which obviously is unrealistic the following weapons do not have the one shot potential to the head the riot tech the dragon off it still sucks i'm so glad to see that i hate the dragon off uh then also the m82 none of those can one shot to the head uh see below for the full list of changes on the ax50 can one shot to the head at any range the max damage range was increased and the headshot multiplier was increased the dragon off cannot one shot to the head they buffed the damage though don't like that uh the max damage range was decreased though so it's still probably not going to be too good hdr max damage range was decreased the headshot multiplier was increased though car 98k from mw max damage range was decreased to 1425 headshot damage multiplier was increased and also the damage in general was increased a little bit as well which is pretty interesting uh spr max damage range increased headshot damage multiplier increased max damage increased uh for the swiss max damage range increased headshot damage uh, multiplier increased max damage range increased or max damage rather increased there for the zrg max damage range increased multiplier for the head increased m82 minimum damage decreased max damage range increased pellington max damage range decreased headshot damage multiplier increased same deal with min damage and max damage uh so that'll be a little bit better i actually believe min damage decrease is a nerf for the tundra max damage range decreased headshot multiplier increased max damage increased it's basically like the same three changes it's just an increase or a decrease for every sniper here right tech max damage decreased or damage range decreased sorry uh minimum damage was decreased headshot multiplier increased type 99 max damage range decreased headshot multiplier increased ads transition in and out speeds were also decreased a little bit for the car 98k same deal with the uh, ads transition speeds max damage range decreased max damage increased three line max damage range decreased headshot multiplier increased max damage and min damage increased ads speed transition in and out was also increased all across the board and the movement speed scaler was also decreased a little bit then for the ptrs uh max damage range decreased headshot multiplier increased upper torso multiplier increased ads transition decreased now has access to lengthened armor piercing subsonic frangible and hollow point ammunition now for smgs on the armagera 
the Kurs 72 round uh, mags, the fire rate was decreased and it now increases damage by 5%. So that'll affect the TTK a little bit. Uh, for the short barrel, the visual recoil was decreased, but the velocity and the control penalties were also decreased. Uh, for the Type 100, visual recoil decreased. You love to see that. Then for the Kurs 48 round drums, the damage multiplier was nerfed and the movement speed was nerfed as well. So those drums are not going to be super ideal and that's probably going to affect the TTK quite a bit. Now for the Owen gun, the Garenko 33 round mags, the neck multiplier was decreased on the Garenko 72 round drums, which is pretty much what everybody uses, the head and the neck multipliers were decreased. Then for the rapid barrel, the fire rate was also decreased. So that top tier Owen gun setup is going to be a little bit worse now. Uh, then on the MP40, the short barrel, the minimum damage was decreased and the upper and lower torso damage multiplier was also decreased. So that top TCK MP40 loadout is also going to be changing quite a bit. For marks and rifles, uh, on the M1 Grand, the lower limb damage multiplier was increased. That's about the only change there. Uh, the subsonic, the bullet velocity penalty was removed well now there's no reason to not be running some sonic i'm pretty sure everyone's gonna be running this on quite a few weapons now especially subs where you don't necessarily need lengthened that's a huge deal. So Subsonic just became a whole lot better, and I expect a lot of players to be running that. Uh, the Mercury Silencer, the damage range penalty was removed, so that's going to help out with horizontal control and not hurt your damage. MX Silencer now decreases Sprint of Fire by 2% and increases range by 10%, so it just makes it better for long range, essentially. Uh, then we get out of the weapon tuning, so a lot of weapon tuning changes for this update. Then to round things out, we've got Mateo as a new operator. And then for the download size on PlayStation, 43.2 gigs on Xbox, 40.9, PC, 38. And if you own Modern Warfare and Warzone, 98.3. Why is that, you may ask? They're re-optimizing all the files for Modern Warfare on all platforms here to make the uh, game size smaller on your hard drives. And I imagine to fix all the install issues with MW files on console as well. So large, large updates, but for a good reason, it'll help out your system once it's all downloaded that said though that is effectively everything that ended up changing in this update obviously a ton of changes in this one if you guys enjoyed the video though let me know by dropping a like on it, it would be seriously appreciated and if you're new here to the channel or if you have not subscribed yet every single day i got you covered with all things going on in cod so feel free to hit that sub button and turn on those post notifications but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you guys later peace out